So I just got my B350 MA from Azus in. I got this for like 100 Australian dollars on a bargain on eBay with 20% off. And same with the R7 1700. This was about 400 Australian dollars and it includes the Wraith Spire cooler. So today I'm going to be overclocking this thing and checking just how well this thing can do on a budget. So I just got this combo in here and you guys have been requesting that I do some content with the more budget orientated rising gear and today we're just going to be doing exactly that. First up I've just got a little graphics card that needs no PCIe connection so I can just see how high the overclocks go on the stock cooler. Then after that we'll change things up a little bit and see what performance we can get out of this B350 motherboard which I know a lot of people are looking to buy one of these and especially the upcoming R5 CPUs. That's the six cores on a budget. So as soon as we jump into the BIOS here, it's actually pretty hot in this room at the moment. We're talking like 28 degrees Celsius. So if anything, this is gonna be a little bit of a worst case scenario for the B350. But you see here, I booted up in uh, this motherboard already and these are the settings I'm getting already. Like I've only spent a few minutes overclocking this thing and I've got 3.75 gigahertz on the Wraith Spire cooler. I've also managed to get my memory up to 2933 megahertz. Uh, I will try to get it up to 3200 megahertz, but that's around about the sweet spot. I mean, the max memory speeds on a B350 are looking like they're 3200 megahertz. Another thing too is, is that I've noticed is that the V core on this motherboard does max out at around, I think it is, yeah, there it is there. So 3.875 volt. So I guess that is the limitation of the B350 chipset. Though if we do max that voltage out, how high can we go with the Ryzen CPU? Are we actually able to run a benchmark, for instance, at say 3.85 gigahertz, which would be very good for not just people on a budget, but also for total performance out of Ryzen, since it looks like the max overclocks you can get here are around about four to 4.1 gigahertz. So if you can get this out of a real budget combo like this, then the value for money is just incredible. Another good thing about this BIOS is that you can save the overclocking profiles. So I have tried a few different things already. The 3.9 didn't actually work, but uh, we're gonna give the 3.85 another try here. So let's boot this up and see how it goes. So now we've booted up into Windows, we can see here the clocks are confirmed with the latest edition of hardware monitor here. So we've got 3.85 gigahertz. So let's run a quick Cinebench test and see if it can do this. Now, I am a little bit worried about the VRM on this uh, motherboard since it doesn't have as many phases as an X370 motherboard. But with that note, um, it does run pretty well. I mean, if we chuck some heat sinks on this MOSFETs and then we start cooling with a fan, I think we could have a really good budget solution here, especially with the cooler uh, going or able to take this to 3.85 gigahertz. Now, would you want to get an aftermarket cooler? Maybe if you're gaming for long periods of time and whatnot, but the Raid Spire cooler is actually really damn good out of the factory. As we can see here, we've got almost 1700 CB out of a combo that only cost me like 500 Australian dollars. So, but at the moment, the maximum temperature we reached was 82 degrees Celsius in a 28 degrees Celsius environment. So this is looking pretty good. We can run it a few more times and see just how good it is. But wow, man, this price performance here is just absolutely phenomenal. So I'm gonna chuck some heat sinks on this motherboard, put a little fan on there, and then also throw on a GTX 1080 Ti and just run some benchmarks at 1080p to show you guys just how smooth the gaming performance is. And of course, Chucking this kind of combo with the 1080 Ti is absolute overkill, but it's still going to prove that the Ryzen R7 on a budget is still a really good solution for someone looking for just great all-round performance. So I've got some little gold heat sinks here. You can get these off eBay for so cheap. I think they're around a dollar. I'll put a link in the description below anyway, but you can get different colors as well. I think I just opted for the cheapest option, but essentially what you do is you just stick these on the MOSFETs. Though with that said, you have to be very careful when putting these on. I usually won't recommend it if you haven't done this before, because if they touch resistors or any other electronics, you can make things go up in smoke, which is really bad. But uh, let's put these on the MOSFETs on this B350 and then try and maybe even chuck a fan on top of that just to help the VRM cool down since it doesn't actually have any uh, passive or active uh, cooling on its VRM at the moment. It's just a complete naked VRM, which is like one of the worst case scenarios for cooling an overclocked CPU. <music> Thank you. 
All right, so we've just finished installing the MOSFET VRM heat sinks here. And if we zoom in really closely, you can see this one's at a slight angle and there's a reason for that. If we look in really closely here, we can see that that resistor's on the left and on the right, I'm just clearing both of those because we don't want to be touching those. They're the things I warned about. Don't have any metal touching those, otherwise it will cause problems. But for what it's worth, it should be okay, guys. This should be good to go. We'll do a little quick test run, of course, ready to switch off the power supply immediately if there's any issues. So let's give this a go. So we just booted up our computer and now we are back into Windows and it looks like the heat sinks are doing just fine there, so there's no problems. Usually if problems do occur, they'll occur like immediately, so keep your eye out if, if you do want to attempt one of these mods, which I don't recommend if it's your first time building at all, but this is just for like, wow, what can I do on a budget kind of thing. So uh, now we're gonna actually try and put a a fan over this and then we're also going to try and install the 1080 Ti and do some benchmarks in games. So I'm just doing some final tuning now before we get on to the gaming benchmarks and also I've noticed that the voltage on this I was able to drop it down by quite a bit but you can still see here in hardware monitor it's still going up to pretty high levels of voltage. So it's kind of like that offset mode has a mind of its own on this B350 motherboard. The temperatures are looking really good. Keep in mind that I did uh, set the speed on the fans to just full and they're actually really quiet at that. So everything is looking pretty sweet. I actually did have to up the system on chip voltage on this motherboard just a little bit too. So that might be something that I'll have to look into a little bit more. And the VTT on the memory, I had to boost that just a tad as well. But let's get on with those gaming benchmarks, guys, because this thing is running very sweet at the moment. So there's the first benchmark there on 1080p Ultra with the 1080 Ti and it was just so damn smooth. It handled it really well and you can see there the average FPS is 134, which is insane. That's really good. So it looks like the optimizations are flowing through for Ryzen, but let's do another couple of uh, benchmarks here and just to confirm that this thing's pretty stable and it's running really well. So there it is guys, another benchmark on this Ryzen uh, CPU at 3.85 gigahertz and the results are just really impressive for this kind of money. Damn, let's move on to the last benchmark now which I think is Ghost Recon's Wildlands which is unoptimized at this point in time but still, we'll give it a run but man, I'm just so impressed so far. So there it is guys, the last benchmark that we did was the Ghost Recon Wildlands. We see there the CPU usage, this thing wasn't even having any troubles and the frame rates were really good. Now I did set this to high instead of ultra because this game is just so graphically intensive at the moment. So the fact that it can pull those frame rates with really good minimum frames is a really good thing for Ryzen. So let's move over now to a conclusion with this setup. So there it is, the cheapest motherboard I could get my hands on for a B350 and it's absolutely kicking ass with the cheapest eight core I could get on the Ryzen lineup. That's the R7 1700 and it even came with the cooler. So this whole combo, again, just incredible value for money. 
Now I will be doing some more tests, but it looks like those updates are especially starting to flow through for performance. Uh, the BIOS update is enabling me to get the memory up even on this B350 to 2933 uh, megahertz on the memory. And also it's handling a 1080 Ti overclocked absolutely fine at 1080p man this thing is doing so well i can't wait to bring you guys a build with this budget setup sort of like cookie cutter horizon build i've also got my workstation coming as well so stay tuned for that because i promised before ryzen came out i said if the performance is good i'll be switching my main rig over to ryzen that's exactly what's going to happen so stay subscribed and hit the like button and i'll be coming back to you guys with another tech video very soon and if you've got any questions about today's video then be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below and i'll get back to you as soon as i can peace out for now bye